How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the season finale of the Murphy Street Collector. I'm the host of the show, Kavika Smith, and as always, the rules of Murphy Street are simple. Shoes and slippers at the door, come inside, and let's talk story. For this season finale, we want to make sure to thank the people that you probably miss rolling by on the credits. So, we want to start by thanking Sandra Gima of the KHON Sales Department. Thank you so much for helping me get this platform. Really appreciate you. Hope to see you next season. I also want to thank the general manager of KHON, Christina Lockwood. Thank you so very much for the opportunity. Last but not least, my brother, John Veneri. Thank you very much for being my mentor and making me better every day, pushing this show to the limits and making it more than I ever thought it would be. Thank you so very much. Now, let's talk about this show. We are taking you guys off island because we want to try something different. We thought you guys deserved something big, so we went as big as we could take it. So follow us as we take you over to Anaheim for this season's finale of the Murphy Street Collector. All right, you guys, so this is our finale episode and we are here at the beautiful Anaheim Majestic Hotel, getting ready to have a good day between Disneyland and Disney California Adventure Park. What's your history with this park? I haven't been to Disneyland or uh, California Adventure until recently. Yeah. As an adult, I've never been as a, as a kid. Last time I came here was back in 2017, so. Oh, whoa, a lot so long changed. overdue. Yes, long over overdue <laughs> and um, a lot of places that I am looking forward to. I love the fact that Walt walked the grounds of Disneyland. Like there's that lore, that mystique, uh, and a lot of the rides as well. All those rides that were here when Walt first opened the park back in 1955 are some of the reasons why I love this park. Disneyland, what is the must ride ride for you? I do look forward to going to Batu or okay. in Galaxy's Edge. Sure. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the Falcon in person. Yeah. Give me one. Give me that one that like, okay, if, if you left the park without going on this ride, it would be like incomplete for you. It would be Rise of the Resistance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I hear from other people's experiences of what they experienced when they rode the ride for the first time and the likeliness to the movies, all of that. I'm looking forward to that. Nice. The Disney California Adventure Side. What would be your ride there? So I, I look forward to like the new side of the park of what they've done as far as enhancements or changes. Um, I know that they're implementing the Pixar side of things. They, they tend to stick to a theme. Um, when it was California Screaming, I remember it being just known as a roller coaster, I guess. Um, but now I, I understand that they put more um, emphasis on the Pixar side of things. So sure, the storytelling. They, they, yeah. they changed the look of certain things, added um, you know, characters here and there. So I, yeah, I look forward to that kind of stuff. For me, I'd say it's the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Control Breakout. So you, you get briefed in the beginning, and I love that briefing. They have the little animatronic rocket that comes up and talks to you, lets you know what the plan is. and and. I think the thing that gets me the most is no matter how many times you ride that ride, you can never tell when the drops are happening. Right. So because of that, uh, I love that ride. It's always a great exhilarating ride. So so much to look forward to. And one place that I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna be looking very much forward to is Avengers Campus. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, first of all, who's your favorite Avenger? I like Spider Man. Spider Man. I you know I like Spider Man too. But I'm also a very big uh, Black Panther. I'm a Black Panther guy. Are we gonna see any? I don't know. They got some kind of Spider-Man thing like going on there. So hopefully we catch some of that. Now, because we are a collector show, we don't want to just talk about the rides of Disneyland because every, not, I don't want to say everybody has, but you know there's rides at Disneyland, but where, I should say, do you think are the collectible spots that a collector can go to get stuff? For me, if you're a collector and you're at Disneyland, you're looking to get something good, something that you hope you've never seen before. I'm a huge Star Wars guy, right? Obviously, we both are. If you go to downtown Disney, out where the old Rainforest Cafe used to be, it's the Star Wars Trading Post, and there you ordinarily can pick up some of the things that you get some of the elements that you can get in Galaxy's Edge. So if you can't make it into quote the, the park, that's a good place. Sometimes they have actually they actually have legacy lightsabers. For me, inside the park, Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. You can get the legacy lightsabers. You can get Kyber crystals, holocrons, Sith memorabilia, Jedi memorabilia. So what about you for Disney California? Where would you tell the collectors to go to get their stuff? Uh, Disney California Adventure Park. I would say. Um, I think it was stage 17. They have all these uh, new Marvel merchandise. Yes, um, yep, stage 17. They have all the Marvel Legends. Um, they have a few statues and whatnot. Yeah, those statues are big time. 
cater to a lot of the Marvel fans if you guys are into that kind of stuff. I heard you got your hands on something. I have, yeah. Um, there was this one particular gog uh, goggles, spider, spider man goggles. Sure. Can you feel the da 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 All right, you guys. So there you have it, you guys. We are so excited to hit the parks. We are going to be on our way. So the next time you see us, we'll actually be in the Esplanade getting ready to go into the park. So it's going to be a great day. Are you excited? I'm totally excited. All right. So everybody hang around. Stick around for the other side of the break. And we will be back from Disneyland over here in Anaheim, California. With one of Hawaii's largest selections of Funko Pops in the islands, From the Heart Hawaii is your one-stop shop for all your collector needs. They carry one of the island's most robust selections of designer toys from all around the world. You like cards? They got that too. Sports cards, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! The list goes on and on. They even have graded cards. So come visit From the Heart at the City Square Shopping Center and find what you've been looking for. From the Heart Hawaii. Time to grind! Time yeah. to grind! Time to grind! <laughs> real refrigerators, real leftovers, unreal results. Sam Choi's in the Kitchen, Sunday at 6.30 on KHON2. All right, well, as promised, we are here at the Esplanade or in between Disneyland and Disney California Adventure Park. We are going to start with Disneyland, though, so you ready, B? Ready. All right, we're going to go inside. We want to take you with us. Let's go. There's something about walking up to the turnstiles at the main gate of Disneyland that always riles up the inner child of my soul. Few things bring me that same exact excitement, and it's something I hope to share with my son. Once you're through, the magic begins. If you're lucky, you'll take the corner at Main Street Station and have Mickey and Minnie standing there to greet you. And if you're even luckier, you'll catch the marching band. All that excitement, we decided that we'd hitch a ride to the next stop. When at any Disney park, I always say jump on any ride that's moving. You can never tell the wonders that lie around every corner. But okay, we've had enough of this train for today. Time to get into some action, and we know just where to go. Hmm. Gonna be honest, was thinking someplace else, but it's a good start. Was definitely looking for a Star Wars experience. With the warm up ride out of the way, I'm hoping we're ready for the big show. And before long, we find it. None other than Batu at the galaxy's edge. Much like the rest of the park, her beauty is far more radiant at night. And now that we're here, we can't help but feel like there's so much to do but so little time. So we better get started. This first attraction was one of the main reasons we came here. Can you guess what it is? How about now? You probably guessed it. The Millennium Falcon. Sweet, I've always wanted to fly this thing. 
I am Kondo Onaka, and this is Onaka Transport Solutions. Today, I am offering your boat to the sea of a lifetime. We gotta jump at that. I can't believe it. We're in the bowels of the Millennium Falcon. All right, no turning back now. Here we go. <laughs> they made it the inside so nice. Yeah. This day's going by so fast, my head's spinning. But luckily, I caught myself just in time to visit Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. And I can tell you this, we're not leaving here without something. That's got to be the coolest gift card. That's very cool. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> I, I got to admit, I thought we'd be leaving with a legacy lightsaber, at least. But anyways, moving on. One more adventure to conquer. And what do you know? We're back in line. Oh, hey, that's new. BB-8, is everyone assembled? Good. Should you be in flight prep? Recruits. Sensor. Thank you, Mando. Black Leader, are you your team ready? I have a bad feeling about this. Stand back from those doors. Cargo vessel TR-141, the ship is now under control of the First Order. Everybody disembark my ship. <laughs> This way. The Panther is back. Oh, here we go. We have no idea where Bronson is. Red, get in south. Blue, go. Gray, step inside yourself. <laughs> I mean, we're not resisting you, but we're resisting. Wow, that escalated quickly. We wanted to make sure to leave some of the magic for you and your family for your visit to Batu. Oh, and now that it's back, don't forget to catch the fireworks at the castle every night at 9 p.m., weather permitting. All right, well, that was an amazing day at Disneyland, but now we need to take it over to the DCA side of things. So we are going to be on our way to Disney's California Adventure Park in just a few moments on the other side of the commercial break. So make sure that you stay tuned. We can fly where you want to. We can leave your house behind. But if your friends don't mask and why don't they mask? Well, they won't fly this airline. You can fly if you want to, cause we do safety right. We have air that's clean and disinfectant machines zapping germs like an arcade space fight. And we dance, do, do the, the dance, dance, do the dance, dance have the filters cleaning commence. Dance. Alaska safety dance, Alaska safety dance. Welcome back to the Murphy Street Collectors finale episode. We are here at Disney California Adventure Park and as promised, we're going to go check it out. I know they got the new Avengers campus. We want to see what else they have here. Come with me. I don't know where Bronson is, but I'll bring the rest of my family with me. You guys as well. So let's go check it out. Though inspired by Main Street USA, Buena Vista Street has a unique feel that is all its own. Side note, I love Oswald. No offense, Mickey. Walking between these two streets helps you to see the stark contrast between Marceline, Missouri and Buena Vista, California. The more modern of the two parks still has a much more earthy feel. Oh, it looks like Avengers Campus is up and running. We'll definitely have to come back and check it out. 
Yeah, but looks like there's a little bit going on. Let's hang around and see what happens with this wall crawler. I love when they start to do the overlays at the park, but definitely love Cars Land when they bring out the Halloween decor. Lucky for us, walking through Radiator Springs, everything was starting to come up. our time here at Disney California Adventure Park, we want to make sure that we do two things, Radiator Springs Racers and check out the new Avengers campus. So, priorities first, here we come Radiator Springs. Of all the queues and all the lines that exist between Disneyland and California Adventure Park, Radiator Springs Racers might be my favorite of them all. I love all the elements that they pull from the movie and make it feel like you are truly immersed in a scene from the movie Cars. never been on this cars ride <laughs> hold on for a second Before Rise of the Resistance was a thing, this ride was my favorite because of the change of pace. Nothing like it was ever done before. And frankly, I love the fact that we race at the end of it. Cars land check. Now, time to go to Avengers Campus. The Avengers compound, the Quinjet, the Guardians of the Galaxy building in the backdrop, and of all those things, the biggest draw right now at Avengers Campus is none other than the Web Slinger ride. And this one, I must tell you, was quite amazing. Now, I'm going to take you in on this ride for just a little bit, and we're going to show you the premise of it, but don't get it twisted. We're not going to give away all the magic. This attraction is nothing short of perfection. They've spared no expense on the details, and it is truly something you'll want to visit. So, as we get ready to jump on the Web Slinger, we bid you adieu for just a moment. Man, it has been a long day. And right now, we're in my favorite time here at the parks. No matter whether it's Disneyland or Disney California Adventure Park, I always love walking around right at dusk. 
Everything seems to be painted so beautifully. And it doesn't get any better than this. As the spiel goes, Disneyland is a walking resort. Although much of the walking goes unnoticed, the steps add up. So make sure you bring the right footwear. If function beats fashion, this is the arena. But you don't have to sacrifice it completely. Just saying, running shoes beat basketball shoes any day of my Disney walking week. And for a top, a comfortable tee with your favorite nerd look will fit you right in. And don't be afraid to twin it up with someone in your party. And last but not least, now you're sure ready to enjoy and be seen at the happiest place on earth. This is Hi'ilani Smith signing off for the last time for season one with your fashion statement. Hey, are you guys gonna do this promo or what? No, you're good. Living your best life. Fashion, food, and fitness. There's something for everyone on Living 808. You are my everything. You are my rock. It's me and you all the way to the top. My partner in dimes. My <clears throat> My ride or die. You always got my back. We just getting started though, got plenty more places to go. Let's dance. Disneyland is known for so many food offerings, but during the hot summer months, a couple of items take center stage, mainly the drinks of the resort. Come with us as we taste test some of the new and old drinks on draft, starting with this oldie but goodie that frankly, I'm surprised Bronson had never tried before. Here it comes, you guys. Get ready for this reaction video. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to try this new root beer float for the first time. Let's see. <laughs> Good. Well, maybe he's just getting warmed up. But for our next taste test, we're going to venture to the newest territory on the resort grounds, Avengers Campus. Here we stumble upon the PIM Test Kitchen, where they're cooking up new things every day. This state-of-the-art food science experiment lab pairs crazy ideas with adventurous taste buds. So we're here for the next dimension flavor. On deck for us today, Hank PIM's Proton PB&J Punch. In the background, you hear all the amazing superhero tones of what you would expect at an Avengers campus, hubby. Huh, yeah. Uh, we just tried the PIM test kitchen, and we saw the PB and the Proton PB and J punch. punch. Right, and so we are going to try this drink today. It was uh, strawberry. Strawberry lemonade. lemonade. Okay. With whipped cream and. But not just butter. regular whipped cream, right? Wasn't it like Some peanut butter whip? Peanut whipped butter cream? whipped cream and, and peanut butter. Peanut butter, peanut butter. Because I'm wondering if this is a combination that's supposed to be amazing together. Is that good? It's like a peanut butter Whopper. What kind of grade do you give this beef? I would give it a B. Ooh. Hold on, let me try one more time. I will also give it a B, B, B plus-ish. Yeah. So uh, once again, this is the punch. Proton PB&J Punch from Kim's <laughs> Test Kitchen over on Avengers Campus. Here at Disney California Adventure, by all means, try them out. Uh, I mean, you'll see the inside on the video. It's really cool. And the campus itself is also pretty cool as well. So I guess on to the next one, see what we try next. The day is fading so fast. It's one of those days where I wish I had the time stone. Nevertheless, we're here for a reason. So as darkness fills the sky, we head back to a galaxy far, far away to see if some weary travelers might find some refreshment. And what do you know? 
We find a place with the lights still on, so we glide on through. Hi. Rising moon. What can we get for you? Um, rising moon. Yes. Um, the difference between the blue and the green. Blue is a tropical fruity flavor. Uh, the green is a citrusy floral. Oh, all right. We are about to do a quick sampling of the Stella Siren milk uh, here at Galaxy's Edge. So uh, we have two options: the blue and the green, yellow, green mustard. All right, trying the blue. All right, I will try it as well. It's hard to explain what it tastes like. And this is the puce. It tastes very similar, but the blue one more ha has more like a tarty, tartiness to it. So, if I had to say, if you were gonna come and try any of these, what would yours be, first of all, be? I would say the blue. The blue? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree. They all agree. <laughs> they, they obviously tried the green. Um, but yeah, winner for today is the blue. So definitely go with the blue. Here you go, B. Cheers. Cheers. Rising moons. Rising moons. Binary sunsets. So good. I was once told this story when I first became a cast member about how before the park opened, Back in 1955, Walt actually took the hand of his wife Lillian and told her, look at what you helped to create. And so it was with that spirit in mind that I want to take this opportunity to remind you not to forget about the people who helped you to create. So I want to take this time to thank my sponsors from The Heart Hawaii and of course Alaska Airlines. I want to thank the friends of the show. Tumua Tuane, Pancho Abalos, Kainalu Moya, Juice Store, Mike Topa, and of course, Warrior Printing. I want to thank my crew, Chris Chang Lo or CeeLo, Bronson Salmon, Bronson, and of course my wife, the lovely Hi'ilani Smith for helping me out with everything that we do. Now, I don't know if there's going to be a season two, but I do want to say this. Thank you very, very much for all of the times that we've had for season one. And I always want to tell you guys to never forget, the rules of Murphy Street are always the same. And before I see you guys again next time, don't forget your slippers. Aloha.